Hey guys, Euro here. Welcome back to another video. And you can tell by the title here, we're talking about another bad take by Brittany Venti. Uh, well, my last video was quite more heated. I want to try this time to be a bit more uh, calm and collected about my statements here. So, uh, she made a new video. Great. Hopefully you guys saw my last one. <laughs> um, so, um, one, a few, you know, housekeeping things. Um, I do not, I want to stress, I do not condone harassment, so please do not go harassing people. As much as in my last video, I, you know, expressed joy of like, you know, uh, her getting disliked and, and ratioed. Uh, but like, obviously, I'm only in joy that she's getting the kind of correct reaction to, from people. Because rightfully so, she was attacking uh, anime fans and specifically fans of Lolly and Shotokan kind of artwork, right? So uh, there's that. Uh, another thing as well. Uh, if you want to watch her video, I will link it in the description below. Uh, it's just skip to about like 1.30, 1 1.5 uh, because she does have like a, a relatively long compilation of mean comments towards her. Uh, maybe if you want to watch that, you can do that as well. Uh, but I feel like a lot of that is out of context. Um, uh, but all as well, it's very possible that people are uh, throwing negative things. Again, not condoning any harassment at all. Uh, in this video, I will use the word lolly, uh, lollycon to refer to shotokans as well. Uh, and just in case anyone who's watching doesn't know what a lolicon is uh, or shotokan, it is a depiction of a young child. So it, whether it be a girl or a boy, um, I'm just going to use that word there. And it's specific, specifically uh, artwork that we're talking about here today. And so two other last things I want to point out uh, is that um, she does mention in her video that she is an avid uh, anime fan uh, and does link her uh, my anime list. I'm not trying to discredit her here, uh, but she does link it to prove a bit more of her credit as an anime fan. Uh, but for some reason, and I don't know why, and only you know now that I'm sure she'll change it uh, by the making of this video, her last update was March of 2019. So I'm not sure how really up to date she is with actual activity of anime fans in that regard. And uh, one last thing before we begin, at around 10.15, is a very interesting image. You should probably review your videos again, Miss Venti, because at around that timestamp, second, so left panel, second from the top, not very YouTube appropriate material, I'll say that. And so, thank you guys for you know, sitting through my intro there. Uh, so what I will start with here is, as I did already, she already started off in her last video attacking uh, fans of Hololive, and Attacking a whole group of people and generalizing them was the bad idea. She probably, I don't know if this is true or not, she probably knows that she'll get a lot of attention and that's why she did that, or she is legitimately ignorant about how people act online. This is, I am confused about this, and hey, if it's actually like a good bait, good on you, but if you're not, man, stop being ignorant and do your research. Like, I don't usually say that to people, but, like, apparently being a an avid anime fan, you would think that you would know a li little bit about the anime culture. Her first statement here, she talks about the sexualization of prepubescent children and finishes the sen sentence with mentions of Project Melody, which is strange because her character was specifically made to look young, yes, but also old enough to actually be on... Uh, the site that she streams on, which is Chatterbait. So I don't know why she mentions that and shows Project Melody. That's a really odd way of doing that. Next, she talks about how lolly cons are harmful. So people who like lolly art. People who defend lolly art say it's just art, which it is. I, I absolutely agree with that. Now, I will say that outright, yes, outright, these are depictions of children. I've already acknowledged that in my last video, so I'm finishing my sentence with that. It is art, yes. It is art depicting children. Yes, I agree with that. But it, the depiction of a child does not imply the exploitation of a child. You could have artwork of an animal and not say you're exploiting the animal. Like there, there's, there's a problem with that as well. So using the definition she mentions earlier, so because she uses a, a Wikipedia definition of what a lollicon or shotokan is, she uses the definitions and claims that people who like the art are predators. But what she forgets to mention in the definition she even reads is that it explicitly implies the artwork 
and has nothing to do with crime at all. It just says this art features young uh, girls and boys. That's it. And that's anime, manga, whatever else other media they include. So I don't know why she's using that argument when she's missing info. So she claims that this lolly artwork or lolly media encourages uh, pedophilia and normalizing it and, you know, encouraging them to act out their urges. Now, I don't know about you, but let's say someone is a pedophile. I would rather them satisfy themselves at home, not hurting anyone, than actually going out and hurting people. I don't know why I need to argue that. And around 6.45, she says that Lollicon did a great job of proving me right. That's a loose uh, quote there. And she's saying that because a lot of people were rebuting her, re you know, replying to her and responding to her, her statements. And for some reason, she has to say that all these people, and yes, I understand pedophilia is an illness of some sort, but she claims that they're all mentally, these people who reply to her or lollicons are mentally ill and dangerous. But where does that evidence come from? I, I feel like she's making some correlation uh, and it, there's no clear evidence to actually say, yes, people who are lollicons are definitely criminals. She shows screenshots of tweets, but there's no context. There's only a picture and then another like reply, but there's no context to what it is. She's not giving us that. And that feels really disingenuous when you're showing these screenshots, but not telling us, okay, they're commenting on this in particular. She's implying that it's negative and talking about predatory behavior, but we don't know for sure. So later on in the video, she introduces Pixiv and talks about artwork that does feature children. Now, images of children, like I said earlier, does not imply exploitation just as much as me showing my face is exploiting myself. I would love to see images that she's trying to censor in full to actually know if she's actually correctly using examples. And after introducing, you know, the idea that Pixiv has lolly art and lolly tags, she shows some pretty, like, disgusting comments, in my opinion. I, hey, I don't know the context, again, it could be a character who is, uh, you know, I don't know this kink very well, but there is a kink I'm aware of that's called baby play. And the comments do point to something like a child or childlike figure in them, but we don't know the context again. Where, what are these, where are these screenshots coming from? What comment section are you looking at? Which images on Pixiv are these comments under? We need more context, Ms. Venti. What, what is going on? In another part of the video, she talks about a Reddit AMA to a pedophile. Now, she really highlights uh, a part that the pedophile himself replies with, saying that his predatory behavior started with anime-style images. This just feels like a mis an attempt at mischaracterizing anime fans and saying that this is a slippery slope to actual sexual predatory behavior. But where's your evidence for that? It's just This is just a statement from one person who is an anime fan who then became a criminal. Uh, in that AMA as well, uh, the person answering the questions does mention there is a company that makes sex dolls that look like children. Okay, so this goes back to my argument that if these people are make, taking that money and buying something so they can relieve themselves without actually hurting someone, that is a non-issue to me. That is when the only issue to me, really, again, is if actual predators are doing something wrong. Now, bringing back a little bit about Pixiv, she says that Pixiv artists do sell Lolicon content. That is absolutely true. I'm not gonna deny that. But she implies that everyone buys it for sexual purposes. How do you know what they're using it for? What kind of content are they actually buying? Do you have the stats on that? Like, are you spying on every single person that buys Lolicon content or content that has children in it and seeing what they do with it? Like. Where's where's the evidence? For some reason, now this is just strange to me here, she does state that the Japanese adult industry produces more content than the West. I'm not sure why that's a, that's the, a problem. She states it as a problem, but it's just a fact. I guess, yes, Japan makes more adult content than the West does. So she finally mentions Gura because Gura is in her thumbnail and mentions again with Project Melody. Now, she claims that VTuber implies sexualization. Simply put, a VTuber is just someone who uses a virtual avatar to create online content. Sexual or not depends on the individual. Hollow Lives talent 
definitely family, more family oriented content. Well, depending on who you're talking to, Coco is definitely guilty for not having a clean mouth. But Project Melody, as an individual, has chosen to do adult content as well. So, VTuber does not imply sexual content, and I don't know why she's making that generalization. She addresses Gura a bit more directly, and I think we can all agree that Gura sounds and looks like a child. No one, I hope, is arguing against that. I think everyone is definitely in agreement with that. Of course, her content does attract lollicons, but that does not inherently make her content sexual. Later on as well, just a little bit afterwards, she takes a joke between a, a joke tweet between Rev and Des, uh, which who I do love to follow on Twitter. Mm, love you guys if you're watching this. <laughs> uh, but it's out of context, and well, not out of context. I feel like she's trying to just give that tweet and taking it much too seriously over what actually was saying, and it's definitely a joke between them. I follow them, and I know what kind of content they put out on Twitter. Eventually, is very correct that Gura's allure is her cuteness or her, you know, her, her childlike uh, appearance that she puts on. But she's false in saying that it directly implies sexual attraction. Going a little bit more scientific here, she doesn't feature this word, but we're going with the same idea here. She talks about the idea of neoteny, which is a science term relating to youthful physical features. Some of these features include relatively round heads, hairlessness, and small noses. Most people in East Asia, like East Asian people, uh, tend to express these characteristics, which is why, in some cases, uh, East Asian men can seem a little less masculine uh, than compared to their other uh, race counterparts. This definitely explains a lot of why people like anime characters and lollies as well. Now, this is a weird statement from her. About 2130, she says that people are definitely using Gura as fat material. Again, how do you know? Do, do you got stats on that? Like, do, are you spying on every single person watching her or looking up her content? Like, it's just a weird statement. So in her video as well, she compares lollicons to bronies, which I will say, I was a brony. I didn't look at the pornographic material, although I was definitely aware of it. That was 10 years ago. I'm aware that there are people who made pornographic material of the My Little Pony characters, not surprising. And just in case you didn't know, bronies were fans, or are fans of the show My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, which first aired in 2010. So with me, I was a brony, I definitely didn't look up the sexual material. That can definitely extend to lollicons who look up pictures of young girls, but do not look up sexual content of those girls. Now in her final like minutes of her video, she talks about counter arguments. Now she's reacting to comments that she says people are saying she doesn't like these characters because she's jealous. She also says then, oh well, it's better that you're throwing money at a real person. You're only throwing money at a company, which is partly right because Gura, let's say, because she's talking a lot about her, is signed under Cover Corp and Hololive under contract to work for them as talent. It is very likely that they have some kind of revenue sharing. She, for some reason, thinks that the money just goes directly, all of the donation money uh, goes to Cover Corp, but very surely the money partly goes to YouTube, obviously through Super Chats, and very surely a portion of that money goes to the company to upkeep things, and then a portion of the money goes to the talent. She also seemingly has to say, oh, I worked really hard to get these donations, which I appreciate the hustle. I can respect the hustle of someone getting uh, donations from their content. However, she says, oh, I don't need the help of a company to do this. Almost as if she's implying that the talent underneath Cover Corp don't have talent. What? Right off the top of my head, Eofi from Hololive Indonesia and Suise both are singers, well, yeah, both are singers and artists. Next, we can talk about Sora, which is one of their uh, big main talents as well in cover core. And another person that I can definitely bring up recently in Hololive English, Mori. She's a rapper. They have talent. And yet you're saying here, sitting like, oh, you know, I don't need the help of a company. I have talent on my own. But these guys, they worked hard. They did auditions. They've, you know, developed their skills. And they've earned their way into Hololive. 
I don't know what they're trying to say here. Like, they've put in just as enough effort as you have in your content as they are right now. She puts this statement on her screen, but she doesn't say explicitly. But she says, hollow simps are worse than pokey simps. I don't see where. But I'd honestly be more happy donating to streamers who are genuinely, genuinely good people, aside from just, you know, being a character, than to someone like Pokimane, who has definitely quite negative press in the past, especially like unintentionally, unintentionally in quotes here, sending her fans to someone's Instagram. Yes, the Instagram was public, but people would have not known about it if she had not shown it on stream. Now here's a part that I find kind of interesting as well. So she says that she doesn't, she's not allowed to show cleavage on her streams, and well, there is obviously characters in Hollow Live that do show quite a bit of cleavage. I don't know where Venti streams, but I'm assuming from what I've seen of her, she streams on Twitch. They have very different policies on content than on YouTube. She does address the comparison that people are making of her argument of video games cause violence. Now, porn, yes, I agree, is instant gratification. Some games are really good at instant gratification as well. But she misses what people are actually arguing with this. They're saying that you, Miss Venti, are saying that there's a slippery slope between looking at children, depictions of children in artwork and pedophilia. Very similar again to the early 2000s argument that playing violent video games makes someone violent. After that argument, she then says that people are saying, hey, we should target actual, real sexual predators versus this lolly problem. I agree with the statement that people are saying, please, you know, we should address actual sexual predators. She made the statement that lollycons are the same as sexual predators, of, but of course people are gonna argue back. A lot of people who are anime fans discourage and are disgusted by actual sexual predators. So if she actually did her research, she would understand that again. Her final counter argument here, she brings up numbers from what she says to be the most popular uh, sites that host Japanese animated porn or hentai. She doesn't really state which sites these are. That's really hard to source. She doesn't even link that source in the description. She sources other things, but it would be very nice if she gave a number here to actually you know, give herself more you know, ground to talk about. So she shows some numbers and she states that over a third of hentai content has the lolly tag. My argument against that as well is that, well, what sites do you use, for one? Two, hentai may feature children in that, but that does not explicitly mean that that character is engaging in sexual content or sexual activities. Oh man, that was a, definitely a long video. So I do definitely appreciate you guys if you've actually come all the way through this video and my argumentation here. Again, my main thing about Miss Venti here is that she's not doing enough research to understand what's going on or taking things out of context. And if she really is, you know, ignorant, well, I'm sorry. But if she is baiting, uh, well, good on you, I guess. You know, you're doing a really good job of marketing yourself. Well, I respect the hustle again. Uh, thank you guys definitely for watching uh, my video. I would love to hear your thoughts uh, about, you know, all of this, of course, uh, down in the comments below. Leave a like and share the video to share, uh, you know, more actual argumentation here. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.